Hi there and welcome to uh, Scale Up to the Unknown. We are really going to dive into some of the typical trends and challenges that we see across the Scale Up community. And you're joined uh, by myself, Lauren, the founder of Invigorate. Very, very quickly on what our agenda looks like for our session. Really, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background to myself and, and Invigorate. We'll then dive into, you know, what does scale up really mean and why do scale ups matter? We'll then kind of look at why really are there so few unicorns? Um, what's on the scale up exec agenda right now? What are some of the com common challenges that we're seeing across the UK scale up ecosystem? And then lastly, what are some of the strategies that we can really learn from and what are some of the strategies that scale ups are using to continue the high growth momentum? So a little bit about myself, I'm an ex-strategy consultant by background. I've worked with the likes of Gartner, the world's largest technology research firm, and Oliver Wyman, a strategy consulting house, helping FTSE 100 companies think about innovation. And most of that involved pairing, partnering, and acquiring scale-ups and really working with innovative players within the market. I'm a engineer by training and background and a strong advocate of women in STEM. And as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm the founder of Invigorate, an online marketplace for scale-up businesses. Really what Invigorate does, it brings together experienced advisors with up-and-coming scale-up businesses. We are disrupting traditional networks and making it really easy for up-and-coming businesses to really tap into serial entrepreneurs, exited founders, people with high growth business experience. Uh, we're hoping to forge diverse business relationships across these two communities, and then of course, build long lasting business relationships. And why that makes us particularly interesting is that it gives us wonderful insights across both what's happening kind of within the new space and within the new scale up environment, as well as taking experience lessons learned from our advisor community. So advisors have worked for a number of the big tech firms, some more traditional corporates, and then of course, some up and coming scale up businesses. The businesses we serve are enterprise, you know, redesign, redefining enterprise software, biotech, biotech technology, um, blockchain, and really um, data and analytics and really envisioning a future. And it's incredibly exciting to, to see the passion that many of these founders hold. They also are backed by very prominent investors, the likes of Downing, Axel, Frog, uh, and Passion Capital. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a background into who I am and what Invigorate is and why we're coming here to really tell you a little bit more about what it means to scale a business. Uh, and hopefully summarize some of our lessons learned that could be helpful to you. Perhaps you're starting up a business or you're thinking about scaling, and it's really helpful to sort of see what some of the potholes or challenges may be down the road so that you can build uh, for scale. So as we all know, getting a business off the ground is incredibly, incredibly difficult, but you know, scaling is incredibly difficult too. Uh, there's no easy journey on building a business, but I love this quote by Steve, the founder of, of Love Space. He basically said, you know, we didn't wake up overnight and say, all right, we're moving from, from startup to scale up mode. But really what a scale up means is you understand the economics of your business. You understand who you are, what your brand is, what you can offer and who are the customers you serve. It's now really about investing more deliberately in those key areas to make sure that you're driving immense, immense value and continuing to optimize your business on a daily basis in order to really uh, maximize the, manu the, the value that you deliver. So we get this question all the time, you know, really what is a scale up? Well, I think it's important to note the Scale Up Institute published a, a really, really interesting report looking at the SME market versus the scale up market. And I think this image you know, says a, a thousand words. There are 5.7 million SMEs that generate 1.9 trillion worth of revenue in the UK. There are 36 and a half thousand scale ups which contribute 1.3 trillion of this total. So really a very small proportion of the SME market is generating 70% of the SME's outcomes. And so that gives you a really, really strong indication of what a scale up looks like. Typically someone that is a business that is growing, 
um, it is of a certain amount, a certain size, and looking to grow, grow faster, and certainly achieve certain ambitions, as opposed to perhaps some of the smaller businesses within the UK. So really, if we know what a scale up looks like, and we know that there are a few of them, but they're highly productive, they employ lots of people, they are, you know, really contributing to the SME market. Why don't we see more unicorns? You know, I'm sure many of you have you know, read the headlines and unicorn um, evaluations are, are often the things that, that make the first, first page of the news, but it is really, really difficult to do. And here are some of the insights. Often scale up businesses struggle with not growing quick enough to be a fast growing business. And you would have seen some of uh, the scale ups within the ecosystem. Hopin is a really great example. Um, although somewhat of an outlier, they grew to a 2.1 billion evaluation within under a year. Really what, what unicorn status looks like is just prioritizing growth and sales and really, really making sure that that is a, a revenue generation is absolutely at the, the forefront of your agenda. So we see that some businesses just do not grow quick enough and do not understand what it means to kind of put the metrics in place to continually driving that growth momentum. A lot of founders are not experienced in running businesses in different business scenarios and different economic situations. Of course, the last couple of months have been incredibly, incredibly challenging for businesses as a whole. Many of our founders that we support, perhaps our first time founders, or you know, just have not seen the economic um, dips. And it's really, really different to run businesses in these various times uh, and have limited experience in, in really leading and, and, and making a business thrive during different environments. Often a lack of alignment and focus, a bit of scattergun, a bit opportunistic, which is certainly what one needs to get a business off the ground. But there is a different mode that you need to shift into from startup to scale up. Structural and cultural issues, often management are managers as opposed to leaders. And it really takes a very special business to galvanize your employees to really behind a vision to grow incredibly quickly. This is an obvious one and perhaps across all business types, but particularly across the scale up ecosystem, mismanaged finance and a lack of structure around fundraising processes and really understanding how much runway you need and how quickly and how often you need to fundraise. And then, you know, the, the age old question, and it's often a question that our advisors ask our scale up founders is really what is your exit ambitions and are you prepared, organized and structured for that? So what's on the scale up agenda now? You've got a, a bit of an overview of really what a scale up means and what a scale up uh, business does, but really what, what are some of the things that they're grappling with right now? And maybe you would relate in, in running your business or supporting these businesses and some of the key challenges. First and foremost, it's adapting to changing client behavior. The last couple of months have been absolutely unprecedented. So really how, do, how does one adapt one's organization to really best cater to clients' needs where, where they themselves may not know what their needs are or their businesses have changed dramatically. We've seen a number of our businesses pivot um, almost in sort of 180 or, or for their whole business or parts of their business, releasing new products to align to a new world. What does the kind of new world look like? Is this sort of uh, this pandemic period um, you know, just a, a temporary thing or has it really fundamentally shift the way in which we operate? And many of them uh, believe the latter and have therefore pivoted their business to be better aligned. Adapting to a different commercial and financial environment, uh, valuations have absolutely been affected. And so a different capital environment and getting used to, you know, the last 10 years of, of raising capital has been uh, somewhat unique. It's been a lot of capital flowed into the ecosystem ecosystem, we've seen a lot of high evaluations, and really to uh, understand that evaluations have been have, have been affected is, is something that a lot of the leaders are grappling with. Of course, um, some have had to furlough staff and downsize their organizations. So really balancing business as usual with continuing to push forward and meet their customer needs is always a challenge. And then lastly, motivating and managing employees, building IND into their businesses, and quite frankly, managing themselves as well. It's been a tough couple of months. 
So as I mentioned, you know, those were the kind of the five key themes that we're seeing across the scale up ecosystem. You know, what are some of the challenges and perhaps let's dive into it. Fundraising is always top of mind uh, with scale ups and certainly something that that founders prioritize. Um, investors are continuing to invest, but in new key growth areas, we've seen areas like edtech, biotech, sustainability, climate change type of topics really um, get a renewed investment focus. So if your business is perhaps not in that space, it's perhaps worth thinking about how you can service those type of um, industries that are you know, have a new spotlight on them. Uh, VC backed businesses um, are really relying very heavily on some of their existing uh, investor relationships. And so we'll get onto that in just a moment, you know, really what does that mean for you uh, fundraising perhaps, or what does that mean for you uh, if you're looking to, to expand um, and, and using capital to do so. Operating leanly and prioritizing is a constant challenge at any stage, but really particularly for first-time founders who haven't had to deal with crisis times before, and especially with the sort of renewed focus on uh, profitability, operating incredibly leanly and prioritizing is, is key. Sales and marketing. Uh, one thing scale-ups are incredibly good at, given their uh, recent startup roots, is listening to customers but can they switch marketing and sales tactics really quickly? Are they able to understand that perhaps what worked a year ago might not work now? Of course, we all know the remote environment and, and selling remotely and engaging remotely is top of mind, but there are more nuances within the space that need to be addressed. As I mentioned, it's been an incredibly grueling past six to, to nine months, pivoting product lines, adapting to leading remote teams and keeping morale intact. And that certainly, again, is at the top of every CEO's agenda. People management, you know, people are exhausted. It's been an, a tough year, an emotional year. Many have had to deal with loss. Uh, many have had to deal with with change, which you know not all of us are are great at. And so, balancing empathy and sensitivity for your workforce, as well as performance, you know, you still need to kind of achieve that high growth momentum, as I mentioned earlier, that a lot of scale ups are under pressure to deliver. And then, lastly, which is an exciting um, agenda item, and we're delighted to see it being sort of raised raised uh, more more generally. It's of course diversity within your organisations, but a lot of leaders actually don't really know how to go about it. Um, setting up an IND committee is not really getting the results. So really, they're thinking, how do we actually drive change, and how do we make these changes? So before we dive into the solutions and, and I'll share some insights on kind of what's working within the scale up ecosystem, I think it's you know incredibly poignant to, to certainly point out is some of these businesses that have done incredibly well did not use technology in itself as a disruptor, but really being incredibly customer centric was how they were a threat to other businesses. So for example, Netflix did not kill Blockbuster, but ridiculous late fees did. Uber did not kill the taxi business, but limited access and fair control did. Apple did not kill the music industry, but being able and forced to buy full length albums was the killer. Amazon did not kill other retailers, but really poor service and bad experience did. The fact that we can now get a parcel overnight is, is an amazing customer experience. And of course, Airbnb did not set out to kill the hotel industry. There was limited availability and pricing options that were available. So I would really encourage you, even if you aren't a scale-up business or a startup business, and, and certainly thinking about how you can service your customers, I would spend an immense amount of time really deep diving into some of what some of their challenges are, as opposed to kind of just trying to force your product down their throat, really, really think about what are some of the things that are not working within the space. Some of the larger businesses won't be able to be as nimble as you are. So spot some of the challenges, perhaps that those traditional competitors within your industry are still kind of um, servicing their clients in the same ways. And you uh, may be able to kind of really uh, fill a gap uh, by really identifying what's wrong within, um, within your ecosystem. 
So some of the strategies to continue the high growth momentum, and, and hopefully these are helpful to you as well. Funds are open, there is money to be invested. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, there are some key areas in which investment is flowing. So really, I would encourage you to think about how that affects your business. And if you are looking to fundraise, just know that the priorities have changed. Uh, a lot of investors are quite caught up in sort of servicing their own portfolios at this stage if they are taking meetings it's really got to be about something that's quite exciting a big market opportunity and certainly something that's quite well aligned with some of their investment theses or how they view the world in five or ten years I think it's really important to note that the pandemic is not a uh, you know one-time occurrence and will perhaps go back to normal um, while certain elements of our life may return to normality I think this has caused a fundamental shift and a lot of businesses that were either well placed for um, for growth and really well placed for this pandemic time um, have done incredibly well. So just know that priorities have changed, but there's still capital out there and I'd encourage you to go for it for your business. As I mentioned, operating leanly and prioritizing, investors are going to look for very resourceful companies, those that are making um, a lot out of a little Given the pandemic times, I think people are more conservative and so you won't see sort of massive evaluations um, and, and the stakes will be higher. So really showing that you can operate leanly and prioritize uh, effectively is, is certainly going to be key. Sales and marketing, and this is something that I've drum, drum home all across my presentation, but if you haven't got it just yet, I'm going to repeat it again, but staying close to your customers, um, even your existing customers, really, really trying to understand how you can serve them in a new world. But I think very much acknowledging that you may need to change tactics, sales approaches and marketing approaches that perhaps worked pre-COVID will not work in the future. So you need to really make sure that you're thinking about your sales and marketing mix and really how to engage. Um, there is a lot going on there. A lot of people are spending a lot of time behind screens. It's getting far more competitive to kind of use digital channels to so really be very clever about how you engage your customers. Leading right now, being, you know, a leader is, is tough. It's, you know, they've, they've equated it to wartime leadership. So really senior leaders, make sure that you are visible and authentic, that you are really showing that you care about your organization. And that leads me to people management you know, really giving flexibility, promoting well-being, um, and really balancing that empathetic approach with the uh, pressures of the business. And I think being visible and authentic and sharing where the business is at, uh, we've seen has been very effective across the scale-up community. And lastly, really about diversity. Uh, you know, the pandemic has brought up a lot of very, very tough issues, a lot of really impertinent movements. And I think it would be a miss for any business to not think about their, their diversity approach. So really, I'd encourage you to start building out your pipeline, investing in future talent, getting involved in diverse communities and initiatives to help build your pipeline is so incredibly important. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been such a delight to share the um, you know, insights from the Scale-Up community, some of the challenges and some of the ways in which um, you know, Scale-Up and business leaders of the future are really dealing with these challenges. And I hope that it's been helpful to you. Please feel free to reach out to me via email or visit our website. We'd be delighted to help you in any way that we can.